Time to play with some clay. All right, I got a just got a new swing arm lamp. When you use a 100 watt bulb in a swing arm lamp at over time, the uh, switch to turn it on and off wears out. And uh, I got this uh, Bostitch. Bostitch? I don't know how you pronounce it anyway. Uh, I've had these lamps before. In fact, I'm using them as a swing arm for my uh, GoPro camera because you you go to like Staples or or Office Depot and you buy a swing arm lamp there and they you can barely get them to hold their position ever uh, because the swing arm is part of it just does not have the strength to hold the lamp up. Um, this Bostitch uh, is probably the best I've found yet, and it holds my cameras perfectly in position wherever I want to put them. Now, I know you probably can't see the lamp that well, but that's the lamp itself. It's a swing arm lamp, and uh, I've got it over my clay. I have to have a 100-watt bulb to keep the clay soft, and I keep it a certain distance away from the clay uh, cheaper actually not cheaper they're no more expensive than these are uh, swing arm lamps that you get from local office depots or anything like that just don't have the strength to keep the bulb above the clay or above or at a certain height so it just starts drifting downwards because it doesn't doesn't have the strength to hold the light up. Well, I took a uh, the same kind of swing arm lamp. I took the uh, bulb part off and built me a, a little platform to mount my GoPro camera on. And you can see that there. And it's strong enough to hold its position wherever I place it and uh, if you're gonna waste your money on a swing arm lamp at least get one that works and this is a good brand I'm sorry to take so much time telling you about it but you know what when something is good I like to pass it on and the last thing you want is your clay melting because the light starts drifting downwards towards it and uh anyway all right i'm going to get on with the clay here that i'm getting ready to start all right i'm going to uh change the uh proportions a little bit because i was going by that figure and this figure is about an inch shorter so i can't go by that figure so i'm gonna have to rethink this uh a little bit not much, but a little. Alright, I got the uh, arms worked out. And now I'm going to start the uh, chest.
those aren't the positions the arms are going to be in. I'm just put them in that position to uh, keep them out of the way. Alright, I got it started sketching in. I'm not uh, going into every bone and every muscle. I'm just doing a shape because it's all going to be covered by a dress anyway. And uh, it doesn't need to be Or it doesn't need to have every muscle and tendon built up because it's a I mean I gotta have the basics but I don't need all the anatomy under I just need the basic and you know anatomy under it the, sh the forms the shapes Now the uh, shape of a woman's rib cage is different than a man's. It's more of a V-shape. The man is is more round. Not sure why that is, but it's just the way it is. So as you can see, I brought out my other mannequin and uh, my cat. This one is uh, shows the muscles on one side and the uh, what it looks like with the skin on the other side. The arms come apart, the head comes apart. The head is actually on a pin, which I like better than the magnet because it has a tendency to stay on. But anyway, it allows you to see underneath the arm. It allows you to see under, you know, the full rib cage without the uh, obstruction of the arm. You get the painted version, and believe me, that's when you start spending some real big money. Oh, baby. Lots of money. Uh, I gotta decide how I'm gonna have her arms. And I haven't done that yet. All right, that's it. I'll come back uh, tomorrow and uh, work on it a little bit more. I like the starting of it. Good night, everybody. Give me a like and a subscribe and ring the little bell. Also, don't forget I have instructional videos available now online. The link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos. Later, everybody. Good night.